So you're looking at investing in a wide angle lens, but you're not quite sure which one you need. Do you need 16 millimeters, 14 millimeters, or even as wide as 12 millimeters? Do you need a wide aperture at f2.8, or is f4 enough for you? Let's dive in and find out. Here we go now. So some of you might know that last year I invested in the Tamron 17-28 f2.8 lens for Sony email. And I actually traded in my 16 to 5 mm lens um, for the Tamron because I said it was lighter and also I was willing to sacrifice an extra millimeter at the wide end for the f2.8 aperture. Um, you can watch the video I did on it um, up here or in the description somewhere. But actually since swapping to the Tamron lens, I've noticed that I've left myself craving a little bit more wideness in my setup. And this is my trusty Tamron 17 to 28 here. But I decided to go out and hire the Sony 12 to 24 f4. This is classed as an ultra wide lens and it is so wide. I believe it's the widest native zoom lens uh, for the Sony E mount. Now I'm going to try and make this video not so brand specific, it's more about wide lenses in general. But if you know me, then you know I shoot Sony, and so I'll be using Sony lenses as examples um, for each point. <sighs> Okay, that's definitely a little bit less windy now. So what you're seeing here is the Sony a7 III with the Sony 12 to 24 millimeter f4 at 12 millimeters. Can't see myself obviously because um, there's no flip up screen, but with the 12 millimeters, I'm pretty much guaranteed to be in frame. Now, usually what I do when I hire out a lens is I take it to a sort of real world shoot and I test it out at a wedding or on a corporate shoot to see if it's something I'd actually prefer, but seeing as corporate shoots and wedding shoots are in short supply at the moment, what with what's going on in the world, um, I've decided to take it down to a little coastal area here, take a few photos and maybe a couple of videos, just to see if I prefer the wideness of this lens to the Tamron. And I'm gonna go back and talk about how wide does your lens need to be? When you're looking at buying a wide lens, do you buy a zoom lens? Do you look for 2.8 aperture? Or would you be happy with F4? and just how wide do you need it to be? Okay, so let's start with the different things you should consider when buying a wide angle lens, and then we'll get onto which one you should buy for which type of work. And the first thing I wanna talk about is how wide you need it to be. In particular, we're talking about 17 millimeter, 16, 14, and 12. And they might sound like they're pretty close together, but at the wide end, every millimeter matters. That's what she Here's an example of 17 millimeters versus 16 millimeters. And here's an example of 14 millimeters versus 12. And because of the way these focal lengths look, it's not like you can just step back a bit and achieve the same look. With the 12 millimeter, it's the look of the clouds going past the camera. I love the way the clouds look a bit warped, but it's dramatic and quite a clear look. For maybe 80% of use cases and for versatility, I'd say that 16 millimeter is probably enough. But if you're an avid landscape photographer or you're a real estate videographer or photographer, then you're gonna really benefit from going for a wider lens. And talking about wideness, you've got to look at focal length versatility. How much can you zoom in? And personally, I'm not too bothered about this because 90% of the time I'm using my ultra wide lens at its widest um, as that's what I bought it for. But for people that wanna take out minimal equipment, it's actually quite important. The Canon 15 to 35 f2.8 is a really good example of focal length versatility. You can go from the wide end at 15 millimeter um, all the way up to a respectable 35 millimeter. But something like the 14 to 24 f2.8 um, by Sigma for Sony E-mount, um, while it's quite a good all rounder, it's not very good in terms of versatility because you only get in 14 at the wide end and only going up to 24 at the telephoto end. Generally, due to how lenses are constructed, the wider the wideness, the less focal length versatility you'll get. So for example, if you're going down to 12 millimeters, you're unlikely to get a 12 to 35 lens, for example. And if you do, it's probably gonna be massive. So when you're buying a wide angle lens, you've got to think, do you want it to be an all rounder or are you just happy with the wide end and for you is wider better? Aperture is definitely something to consider when you're looking at a wide angle lens. Normally in the zoom lenses, you're looking at something between an f2.8 and an f4. In my opinion, if you're buying a lens you're gonna use at the wide side, then aperture isn't necessarily that important. If you're doing landscape photography or even real estate photography or videography, you'll benefit both in sharpness 
and in how much is in focus by stepping down to f4 or even closing up more than that. So I don't really think you'll be using f2.8 all that much since I've gone from the 16 to 35 f4 so the Tamron 17 to 28 f2.8 I use 2.8 a little bit but also find myself stepping to f4 quite a lot when I want to get a little bit more in focus if there's a lot of depth in the shot for example but if you are using your wide angle lens as more of an all-rounder then maybe you want something with f2.8 for example if you're using it for weddings and you can't really rely on the light then you are going to enjoy that 2.8 aperture finally you have to look at the overall versatility which is probably one of the most important things for me how big is it how much does it weigh and is that size and weight worthy of any trade-offs in, for example, focal length versatility, how wide it is, or the aperture? Here's a quick table of the comparisons between some of the most popular wide-angle zoom lenses in the RF and E-mount, along with their specs. As you can see, there's a correlation between the wideness of the lens, the aperture of the lens, and the weight of it. So that needs to be taken into consideration whether you're trying to travel light or you're trying to balance your wide angle lens on the gimbal. And it's one of the main reasons I went from the Sony 16-35 f4 to the Tamron 17-28 f2.8. It's smaller, lighter, and it was much easier to balance on my gimbal at the time. Okay, so what's to follow is an opinion and you should definitely be making your own decisions based on what's right for you. But first up, for landscape photos, a restaurant or real estate photos and videos, while 16mm is definitely enough, I'd recommend going to 14 or 12mm um, if you're going to be shooting more content like this. Something like the Sigma 14-24 or the Sony 12-24. And I definitely think you get away with f4 in these sort of circumstances, um, especially for the landscape where you want to get as much in focus as possible. Um, and it's more than enough for those real estate and restaurant photos and videos too, I found. So don't worry, you don't need to sell your kidney for that Sony 12 to 24 f2.8. If your main purpose is for vlogging or travel um, and you just want that versatility, then the Tamron 17 to 28 f2.8 is a great option. It's lightweight, it's small, and it's a really good price as well. Alternatively, you can obviously, if you want more versatility, you can go for Peter McCannon's 15 to 35 um, f2.8. But these lenses are heavier um, and they're more expensive, as is the Sony 16 to 35 f2.8 G Master. But for travel and vlogging, I think these lenses are definitely the best option, and going to 14 or 12 millimeters would be a waste. If your main purpose is wedding work, where you're going to be shooting lots of externals of venues or internals of ceremony areas or reception dinners then 16 was kind of wide enough, but you'll definitely get more of a wow factor from shooting 14 or 12 millimeters. Personally, I found the 16 to 35 F4 by Sony quite heavy for what it was, um, and I wasn't a fan of the F4 aperture, considering I was shooting in dark rooms quite a lot. So then the Tamron 17 to 28 was great. I love the 2.8 aperture. I love how lightweight and small it is, but it did leave me wanting something a little bit wider. And so I think 14 to 24 is kind of the perfect focal length um, for weddings. So you're looking at the Sigma 14 to 24 for that. However, that lens is very heavy. And so I kind of ruled it out just because I did not want to be carrying that around in my bag. Um, it would have been a nice lens to have and maybe one day if they try and make it a little bit lighter um, around that focal length, I would definitely buy it. But that lens was definitely too heavy for me. So I did eventually settle on the Sony 12-24 f4. Um, that 12mm look just looks so good. Um, and I think most of the time I can get away with f4, especially with how good the Sony cameras are in low light. So I'm trading in my Tamron 17-20 f2.8 for Sony and getting the Sony 12-24 f4. I'm going to be doing a lot of uh, real estate photography uh, videos as well and then lots of restaurant stuff of like bedrooms and sort of internals and externals. So the 12mm and the versatility of that was great for me. That's it from me. Leave a comment down below which wide angle lens is your go-to and what are you thinking of buying uh, for the work that you do. If you like this video, smash that thumbs up button. If you didn't like it, press the thumbs down button twice. And if you wanna see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.